All right, so welcome to Raccoon City. Just dropped today. Checked it out. And my r review for the last Resident Evil, the final chapter, will be out tomorrow. And then I'll do a ranking video with this movie included. So let's talk about Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, the new reboot, remake uh, by the director of Strangers Pray at Night and the 47 Meters Down movies. He's writing this one as well as directing it. And this one tells a story about a group of stars, soldier, uh, cops known as stars. They go to this mansion to investigate what happened to the Bravo team. And when they get there, they are attacked by zombies. And this whole town is a ghost town. It's dying. The Umbrella Corporation is moving their shit to a different town. And they're going to clean up their mess in this town because they need to contain the outbreak. And they're going to blow up the town by 6 a.m., and this team needs to get out of the town before everything blows up. So let's get into my pauses. What I like about this movie, I like that it is different from the franchise. Uh, from Paul Anderson, this is paying more respect to the source material, the video games. It's actually, act, uh, the plot is just like the video game uh, from what I read. I've never played it, but I did some quick research on it. And it sounds very similar to the movie I just watched. You got a group of stars people they go to a mansion and there are zombies there you got jill valentine in the movie you got a guy named chris who i think is one of the other playable characters in that video game and one of the main villainous zombies towards the end kind of looks similar to some of the pictures i saw of the zombie in that game so they're paying way more respect to the video game unlike the other movies from before but like i said i'm not a fan of the video games because I've never played them but the reason why I think this is a positive is because it allows the movie to be more darker and more scary than the franchise we got before and I really like the score in the movie it's composed by the guy who did the Robert Egger films the lighthouse and the witch and even the swerve check out that movie it's more of a drama but it's got a gut punch ending so check that movie out and it has like a deep red child vocal sound like when the opening logos are popping up and it, like the choir kicks in the kids vocals it sounds like the deep red melody which i love because i love deep red and also there's a couple of cool songs from like journey and other bands that play in the movie it's kind of like the strangers pray night where they play like pop songs over like horrific imagery so it doesn't really match what's happening on screen so it's just kind of funny like you'll see like a guy on fire with like just this pop song playing over it. So it's very much uh, a gimmick that this director likes to do. And I also just kind of like the look of the movie, the cinematography, it's very dark and it's got some warm lighting in some scenes and it just has a much different look and feel than the other movies. And this is from the cinematographer that did a lot of Alexander Aja films and Frank Cal Foon, Calhoun, whatever, the Maniac remake, the guy who did that in P2. So this is a very good cinematographer. And I think the most horror in this movie really just comes from the opening like prologue in the orphanage. Everything in the orphanage, I really liked. That stuff was the most creepy. You got a woman with like this leather face, a skin mask. I don't know if it's supposed to be like real skin or if it's just rubber, uh, but it looked pretty creepy. So I liked that imagery. It was the scariest things in the movie. I love Donald Logue in this movie. He's like the sheriff of Raccoon City. And when shit hits the fan, he's just trying to leave. He's like, I'm out of here. I, I like his character. He's got some good like comic relief that he adds to the film, but it's not too silly. It's not too much. So I really like him as an actor, and I like his character. And I even like the dialogue in the open, in the first act between the stars. You know, the you know, that's what they call themselves, the, the police officers, between like Jill and you know Westbrook. Brock, whatever, like West, I don't, I can't remember their names, but you know, but I like the dialogue between them. It's witty and it's just, it's not too goofy. Getting into my dislikes, the biggest thing I just did not like about this movie is the new rookie character who just coincidentally is showing up the day that shit's hitting the fan. I mean, how unlucky of him, right? And then even the other chick, uh, Claire, she's coming into town the day shit's hitting the fan. Like, what a weird coincidence that these two people decide to go to this town the day it's gonna like blow up. But this rookie character, Leon, I think was his name, he was just way too dumb. Like they overplayed that hand. They're like, oh, he's just so dumb. The audience is gonna laugh at him. But it was just like, it wasn't funny at all. It was more agitating. Just like this guy is too moronic to be a rookie cop. And they just, they talk about how he shot someone in the ass in the academy, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, he's just too moronic. 
that was just frustrating to me. And there was a couple of decisions, not only from him, but also other people, and even Donald Logue. He does what I can't stand in movies, and that's when they have a gun. They just waste all the ammo shooting at nothing, blind firing. There's some dumb character decisions in this movie that just really bugged me. And one of the main characters in this movie, Chris, who's like the brother of the other main character from Crawl, uh, she, he is the weakest actor in this to me. Whenever he had to be like emotional, it was just very weak, and it, didn't, it wasn't believable to me. It just really took me out of it. And this movie, just like the whole franchise, really doesn't have much gore in it. I was expecting this one to go harder in that department. It's just like blood everywhere, but it's pretty tame. There was a, a moment of gory aftermath. Some, you know, someone got fucked up and we just saw their body afterwards. That was the goriest moment to me, but not a whole lot. I was expecting this to be a lot more bloody than it was. And I was expecting this one to be a lot more suspenseful, but outside the prologue in the beginning, there was mainly just some jump scares here and there, and it just wasn't very scary to me. This one lacks tension and suspense that I was looking for. And I was a little underwhelmed by the final battle. I thought that that should have been played out a little longer. Uh, maybe have some more characters die. I feel like there's just too many survivors in this movie. But they're just trying to set up a sequel. They're trying to set up a whole franchise after this. You get like a post credit sequence where a character that was in one of the sequels in the other franchise coming back. I won't spoil who, but somebody else is introduced at the last minute. You're like, so you're like, oh, they're going to bring that character into the next movie, and they're going to continue to fight Umbrella. So this is just restarting the whole franchise, and I was just more wanting a one-and-done movie, but I guess I was stupid to think that they were going to do that. They're going to start a whole franchise again. So this movie just feels like a stepping stone almost. They're just setting up the next movie in the final act, getting all these characters together, and they're going to go fight Umbrella in the next movie. And I'm not really looking forward to that. I wish they just would have contained it here somehow. I don't know, but have a better climax. I was just a little underwhelmed by it. So final thoughts, I think this is a Resident Evil movie for the fans of the video games. If you liked the more fast-paced, action-packed stuff that you were getting in the other franchise, you're not really going to get a whole lot of that here. It's paced differently. The tone is different. It's not as action-packed at all. Um... So don't expect the same thing. So I think this is mainly just for the video game fans and don't expect a whole lot of gore and suspense or any of that. It's kind of tame, like I said, but it's still worth watching. But I just wasn't blown away by it. It's definitely a well-made movie, but just didn't knock my socks off. I was hoping that this would be like easily the best in the franchise. And I'm not sure if it is at this point. So when it comes to Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, I recommend maybe just streaming it, borrowing it from a friend, or reading it at Redbox. So those are my thoughts on the new Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. I will be reviewing the final chapter from 2016 tomorrow, and also I will be doing a ranking video, so check that out. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, uh, hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And remember, it's just an opinion. You don't need to get butthurt about it.